A very pleasant good morning. Welcome to the morning devotions brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands for Tuesday, the fourth day of June, 2024. I am Deacon Howard Bethel, the assistant curate at the Great Parish of St. Agnes, located in Grantstown, Nassau, New Providence. Let us pray. O oh God, your never-failing providence sets in order all things, both in heaven and on earth. Put away from us, we entreat you, all hurtful things, and give us those things which are profitable for us, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, beginning at verse 13. Then they sent to him some Pharisees and some Herodians to trap him in what he had said. And they came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and show difference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with truth. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why are you putting me to the test? Bring me a denarius, and let me see it. And they brought one. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, Caesar's. Jesus said to them, Give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they were utterly amazed at him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning, I would like to draw your attention to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, where in this passage we once again see an interesting interaction between Jesus and the religious leaders of his time, as they try to trap him with a question about paying taxes to Caesar. You see, this particular passage begins with the Pharisees and Herodians approaching Jesus and posing a question designed to put him in a difficult position. They asked him whether it is lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not. And Jesus, being aware of their malicious intent, he responds with wisdom and insight that transcends the immediate dilemma they present to him. You see, it was at this moment that Jesus asked for a denarius, the Roman coin used to pay the taxes, and then poses a question of his own. Whose head is this and whose title? When they reply that it is Caesar's, Jesus delivers his famous response. Give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. My brothers and sisters in Christ, in these few words, Jesus offers a profound lesson on the relationship between faith and the world. By acknowledging the authority of Caesar in the realm of politics and governance, Jesus reminds us of the importance of fulfilling our civic duties and responsibilities as citizens of this country and this world. However, since Caesar's image was on the coin, in the sense that the coin itself belonged to Caesar, therefore Jesus affirms here what we see throughout Scripture. This is the fact that God ordains government as a good institution under his authority for the good of the people. And because of this, we should render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, including taxes in these circumstances. In addition, we see that at the same time, he also emphasizes what is most important, the higher allegiance we all owe to God, the creator of all things. You see, my brothers and sisters in Christ, as Christians, we are called to live in the world, but not of the world. We are called to be faithful citizens, obeying the laws of the land and contributing to the well-being of society. But in the end, our ultimate allegiance should always belong to God and God alone. You see, we are to give to God our worship, our love, our obedience and our whole lives. But what does this mean? What does it mean to render to God the things that are God's? What does it mean to give God our whole lives? You see, think about it. My brothers and sisters in Christ, Caesar's image may have been stamped on a coin, but where was God's image stamped? From the very beginning of time, in Genesis 1, 
God's image is stamped on every human heart. Therefore, we are called to live our lives knowing to whom we belong. And this is God and God alone. Each day of our lives, we should live it, offering it back to God through our gifts, our talents and abilities that he has freely given to us. You see, God is the author and creator of all things. And this text today reminds us of who and what is truly in control of our lives. So no matter the situation that we face in our country and in our communities, no matter how much we blame Caesar or governments or social ills and crisis we face, the truth of the matter is until we begin to render what is Caesar's, the things that are Caesar's, and God the things that are God's, we will not see the change that we wish to see. Until we give back to God our hearts and learn to live in love and unity, we will not see the change that we so long for within our country. So as I close this morning, let us be reminded that in the world that often demands our loyalty and allegiance, our primary loyalty must be based on Jesus' words to prioritize our devotion to God above all else. Our faith should inform and guide our actions in the world, shaping our values, decisions, and interactions with others. When we live with integrity and faithfulness, we bear witness to the gospel in our lives. Therefore, we must all strive to live as faithful followers of Christ, honoring God in all that we do and reflecting his love and grace to the world around us. So may we render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, but may we never forget to render unto God what is God's. Amen. Thank you once again for listening in, and we ask that you please share this message with your family and friends. Have a blessed day. Yeah.